Hello everyone, uh, my name is Greg Oldson, I'm one of the naturalists with the Jasper County Conservation Department and today I wanted to share with you uh, one of our awesome environmental education animals whose name is Cupcake and if you are a student in the Jasper County area you probably recognize her from school programs or field trips. Um, we've had her out at the, the, the county fairgrounds during county fair um, to, to show her off and, and show how awesome of an animal they are. Um, I do know that some people are afraid of snakes and, and I get it. Um, they, they could be intimidating if you uh, walk up on one in the middle of the woods. They, they can startle you, but uh, we have to remember that these animals are important. Uh, they do serve a purpose or a job out in the environment. Um, and for those of you who don't know what kind of a snake this is, uh, it's a fox snake and fox snakes are actually in the rat snake family. Um, so one of their, their main jobs or purposes um, out in nature would be to control the, the rodent population. So they love to eat mice and voles and shrews, uh, possibly ground squirrels. Uh, when they get to a, a large size, they've even been known to eat birds, smaller birds and eggs. Um, so, for those of you who do not really care for mice or other rodents in your house, um, it's probably a good thing to have these guys around because they help to control those populations. Um, the way that we can tell that this is a fox snake, and hopefully I can bring her in here a little bit closer so you guys can see. If we look at the pattern on her back, you guys can see that there are some dark um, splotches that go all the way down her back and eventually down towards her tail they turn into lines. Um, so these dark black or dark brown uh, blotches or splotches on her back uh, tell us that she is a fox snake and not a bull snake. Um, some kids think when we first bring Cupcake out that she might be some sort of a rattlesnake. Um, I always tell them we would not bring a poisonous snake into the, the schools or out on a field trip um, to endanger you. So um, yes, she is a fox snake and some people wonder why they got their name. Um, so the reason that fox snakes are called fox snakes is because when they feel threatened, um, sometimes what they will do is release an odor or a musk um, that supposedly smells like a red fox. So that is how um, they got their name. The other way that we can tell that she is a fox snake, if we take a look at her head up there towards her snout or her nose, um, you guys will see that it comes up to a blunt point. It's not a sharp point up at the front of her, her face. Um, so bull snakes, they will have a more pointed snout, where fox snakes, it comes up to a blunt end. And you guys can see um, she loves to wrap around things. When you're holding her, she'll wrap around your, your hands and your arms. Um, and we, we oftentimes talk about why uh, she hangs out so close to us when we're handling her. Um, so snakes are, are reptiles, and some of the characteristics of a reptile is one, they have scales. So oftentimes when we think about snakes, we think about their, their scaly skin. Um, most snakes, or a lot of snakes anyway, are oviparous, which means that they lay eggs. There are some snakes that have live birth, uh, but fox snakes actually lay eggs. They can lay anywhere up from 1 to 15 eggs at a time, um, and that's during the spring, and they usually hatch out in, in August. Um, the other thing about reptiles is that they are cold-blooded. So oftentimes when we ask kids, what does it mean to be cold-blooded? Are we cold-blooded? Um, they oftentimes say that no, we are not cold-blooded, but what does it mean? So cold-blooded animals uh, basically get their, their body heat from an outside source. So when the sun warms up their body, if they're basking in the sun or if they're laying on uh, dark colored rock that, that has some heat to it, um, they use that heat and they convert it into energy. Uh, so when she's hanging out really close to my body, uh, she's basically utilizing my body heat um, and in turn turning that into energy that she can use. So the colder it is, uh, the, the less active they are, and as it warms up they will be more active. Um, during the spring and the fall, 
you will sometimes see these guys out and about um, during the day and then in the heat of the summer most of the time they are out um, at night active looking for for food um, the other thing we were talking about how she likes to wrap around things so when she finds her prey whether that be a uh, mouse or a ground squirrel or a vole or a shrew, uh, what she will do is she catches her prey with her mouth. She does have teeth, so she will catch them. Hopefully by the head is what, where they, they like to try to aim. And then after that, they will wrap their body um, around their prey. So they are constrictors. Um, they will basically squeeze their prey until it's dead, and then they swallow it whole. Um, the cool thing about snakes is if they find a meal um, that might be a little bit too big uh, for them to handle, what they can do is actually pop their jaws loose um, and that allows them to swallow their prey whole. So I always tell kids, um, if, we, if we were built like a snake, that would mean you could go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac and you'd be able to pop your jaw loose and just throw that burger in whole and try to swallow it. Um, so it's, it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty interesting uh, to watch her feed because when she swallows a mouse, um, you can see it takes her some time to work on it, uh, but eventually she gets it swallowed and you can actually follow uh, the mouse going down throughout her body, which is pretty cool. Um, so you guys already took a look at the scales on her back, um, but I wanted to show you the scales on her belly. So one other way that we can identify fox snakes, if you can see that, um, their belly scales are kind of a, a yellowish, a light yellow color, and then they have these darker black uh, spots that cover the, the belly scales. Um, as you guys can see, and as most of you know, snakes do not have legs, obviously. Um, so how, how do they move if they don't have appendages like that? So those scales on the bottom are rough and basically give them traction or grip as they're moving across the, the landscape. Uh, snakes are very strong, they're basically one big muscle. So as they're moving across the ground, they can basically extend those muscles out, extend their body out, and then they can track their muscles and pull them uh, across the ground. So fox snakes are one of the more common snakes in Iowa. Uh, some of the different places that we can find them uh, would be in wooded areas. Um, they prefer, prefer uh, more moist habitats than some of the other larger snakes that we have. Um, so sometimes we find them in, in wet prairie areas, um, along pastures, but they have adapted really well to um, humans. Um, so even if there's an area out in the country that becomes developed, uh, we will still find fox snakes there and they can cash in on um, some of the mice or other rodents that might be in that area. Uh, if they find a rocky outcropping or a crevice somewhere, uh, they will use that for their hibernaculum or their den site. Uh, so during the winter, uh, just like turtles and other reptiles in Iowa, they will hibernate throughout the winter time. And then as the days become longer and the temperatures start to warm up, um, they will wake up from those den sites and go out to find a mate and hopefully uh, be successful in, in laying a nest, making a nest, okay? And the last thing that I wanted to share with you guys, um, if we look closely at her eyes here, and hopefully you'll be able to see this, um, you can tell that her eyes are kind of cloudy right now. Um, so under normal conditions, her eyes would be a dark brown or black color. Uh, but right now they're kind of that gray, cloudy color. And that means that she is about ready to shed. Um, so just like turtles will shed their scales, snakes do this as well. And if you're lucky enough when you're out hiking around, you can actually find uh, snake skins or sheds um, out in the timber or in wet areas of the prairie um, and it basically looks like it just peels off of their entire body so as they grow bigger or larger um, they will shed that skin so that they have room to to grow. Um, the other thing you guys can see that she is um, flicking her tongue right now and uh, kids always ask, why, why is she doing that? Why, why is she flicking her tongue constantly? Um, so this is one of her uh, sensory organs. She will use her tongue uh, to basically smell what is around her. 
Um, so they, they're pretty amazing animals, awesome to have around. Um, even if you are scared of them, um, I, I would say that you should take that fear and still be, still be curious about them. That doesn't mean you have to go and pick them up and handle them, um, but just appreciate what they, what they do and why they're here. And uh, it was great seeing you guys and talking to you, and I hope we'll see you again soon.